So if we come down the front here, then we go over here. So if you hold up nice and tight, that's good. What Hi, was your I'm name? Marty. Marty. Um, I have had, well, I came from a sexually abusive family, and yep. then I confronted them actually like starting 30 years ago. Yeah. And I would say every single night since then, and maybe even before then, but I'm like chased and they do everything to dismantle anything I can create. And I mean, it's pretty much the same way in real life for me without them being involved in the physical. Yes. Where I can never even get even like, if I can get enough ground to even stand on with one foot, I'm lucky. Yes. So here's you. All right. And the family that perpetrated the abuse, because it's always a family generally, because it, there's a certain preconditioning that's got to happen. And whatever the member of the family is, oftentimes it is the male, but sometimes it involves both, or is the female. Whatever it is, there's emotional preconditioning that established the abuse in the first place, right? And then so, so the abuse occurred as a child. And then as uh, we grow up to become an adult, a lot of abu abused, abuse victims say, I don't want to be the victim anymore. What I'm going to do is stop these people from influencing my life. So what they do is they basically cut off their family from influencing their life anymore in a physical sense. The problem with that is that the person themselves doesn't deal with certain emotions generally. So they don't feel their shame. They just bottle it up and bury it. They don't feel their terror. Because usually involved with any abuse, there is a lot of terror and fear. And so they bottle that up and bury it as well. And usually there's also, uh, capping a lot of this stuff, is an anger that develops inside of the person as well about what happened to them. Does that make sense? And they bottle that up and bury it too, generally. So now we're suppressing very large amounts of internal emotions that all need to come out. Now... Many people in their awake state then choose to do things like uh, changing their name. So, so they want to have a complete different persona than the child that, of what happened to the child. Does that make sense? So they change their name. They start taking medication for their depression. depression because usually they have depression by this stage. They have some form of depression where they feel bad about themselves and they try to deny that they feel bad in it. So they go into a depressive state. Oftentimes then medication is needed or they might have their first child and that triggers memories of events that they suppress. And so what happens then is they have what's called postnatal depression and then that sort of leads into other things and then they start taking medication in order to suppress those particular things as well. So there's a lot going on for this person who was the victim of this abuse. Agreed? And any person who's been abused knows that it's a lot going on, right? So there's this abuse that occurs. Many times this person also becomes hyper-vigilant. In other words, they're always on the lookout for something going bad. And they also become quite uh, what you would call uh, like manic in their behaviour many times. In other words, they're very, very busy in their life. They become very busy. Often they become what are called super achievers, you know, where they're just busy, busy, busy. And the main reason why they achieve a lot is because they're busy all the time because they don't want to stop because as soon as they stop, they feel bad. So they're busy, their life and so forth. So all of these emotions are still within the person, right? Not being released. So even though you have precluded this group of people who created the events from your life in a physical sense, because you can do that here physically, of course, you can't preclude them from your life in a spiritual sense without releasing these emotions. So from a spiritual sense, you're going to attract people in your awake state, you're going to attract people who are very, very similar to the abusive family that you grew up with. In other words, you'll attract men from the spirit world who had the same kind of attitudes towards you that your father had or whoever the abuser was had. And you'll attract women from the spirit world that have very similar attitudes and beliefs about what your mum has. Does that make sense? Now, most people on earth walk around very unconscious of the spirit entourage that they're walking around with. But these spirits are constantly trying to influence their life in a negative way 
generally in a negative way or what they believe is positive for themselves in other words they're very selfish spirits and they're just trying to get their needs met through this individual but when you go to sleep there is no barrier that you can enforce does that make sense and so that means that these very people who follow you around all day or every day that you can maintain a degree of autonomy from and maintain a degree of distance from when you go to sleep you can no longer maintain the distance all of these things in you will attract these events and attract the kind of people who are willing to perpetrate these events in order for you to release the emotion does that make sense there's a purpose to it and that is that you finish up releasing these emotions the majority of people what they do though is they wake up terrified of all of these kind of emotions many people therefore don't sleep very well or they uh, or they sleep at odd times you know they sleep during the day when all the other people are at work and and they go to sleep sleep uh, uh, they wake up at night whenever all the other people are awake so that anybody who's also asleep can no longer affect them all right because remember these attractions are still occurring at a soul level so the only way to prevent these attractions from occurring is to actually work your way sincerely through these emotions that's the only real way to prevent the attractions occurring in your sleep state so what happens for most people is in their awake state they have a semblance of normal life because they can prevent these kind of people to a degree from influencing them and bear in mind that you can't prevent the spirits from influencing you still and so the spirits generally surround you in that place but when you go to sleep you can no longer prevent their influence and whatever emotions you have that you haven't dealt with will draw specific events to you involving generally the same kind of people so they seem to want me to not be able to exist so that would be coming so i'm attracted i'm not quite understanding like i know when i i, I know there's this sense that they don't want me to be able to survive on the earth get any grounding so, so not exist is the feeling they want yeah I, yeah I and to not be able to have any sustenance at all so not survive yeah yeah and now, you think about your parents emotions towards you mm -hmm. what were their emotions towards you in that regard probably i was one of seven children so we just the fact that we existed was very problematic correct yeah, the feeling I feel from them is this feeling that, you know, they didn't really want that many children. They didn't. It was no. like an Irish Catholic, seven kids, Correct. one after it the other. Correct. It was religiously forced upon them. And then he had all the sexual abuse energy, and then she was the split-off wife who just sacrificed us up to it. And became a martyr. Yeah, and totally dissociative. Yes. Yeah, she yes. didn't even emotion, have enough emotions to be a martyr. She just was like, I don't know what's going on, kind of thing. Well, she knew what was going on, but she doesn't want to be yeah, conscious of it, Yeah, that was her right? stance. That's yeah. her stance. Her, her, so her explanation is she doesn't know what's going on, but the reality is she knew what was going on and just didn't want to be... Well, and conscious. what's interesting, she has taken on the lead of the pack of destroyers when I go to sleep. Now she's at the helm. She's become much more aggressive in the of dream course. plane. So she's getting them, if they find me doing anything, like if they find me, even if I find a broken down car, I can drive away and they're able to, she tells them and they find me. Can I explain what often happens to a wife whose husband abuses his children? The wife often feels jealous of the husband, of the child. Do, do you understand? And as a result of their jealousy, they often project that the child, that it's the child's problem as well, that they, and that they enter a competition with their child. And from that point on, if it d develops into rage, they become resentful of the child's existence, resentful of what the child does, resentful of any success the child might have, and so therefore becomes the leader of a person, a group of people who attack the child. Does that make sense? And one, one more thing, when, when I'm... So and what, can I just stop you for yeah. a sec? You're not feeling what I'm saying to you, that, right? And it's okay, you, you're allowed to not feel what I'm saying to you, but... but if, if what I was saying to you was hitting your heart, you would already be probably crying by now. Well, that, that's my thing, is I'm afraid of getting blamed for what they're doing to me. Exactly. Yeah. You, and in fact, you, you do believe you are to blame for what they're doing to you. 
all right? And this is what shuts down your grief about what they're doing. See, you, you believe that you were to blame for them feeling, you, that you were to blame for existing even. No, they had sex. That's how you came into their family, you know, and that, that attracted you as a soul into their family. But, but you believe it's your fault somehow because they felt it was your fault. And that's what's shutting you down emotionally. So if you allowed yourself to feel, right, that it's not your fault, and there's no need to do that, <laughs> Jen. If you just allowed yourself to feel that it's not their fault, not your fault, but theirs, and allowed yourself to see that, you would connect to the grief more readily. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I, when I look at them, when I, when I know this thing's going on in my life, I'm afraid I'll be blamed for the fact that this attractions there kind of a thing yeah the reality is there are feelings in you that do allow the attraction but you did not even put these feelings there so you're not to blame for the feelings existing but the feelings are in you and only you can release them so so it's a very different viewpoint you're not to blame but you need to take responsibility for the feelings to release them otherwise they will stay with you does that make sense so, so the key now is to allow yourself to feel your way through these things and some of these, so Motti, the, some of these statements that you make about yourself now are clues as to what's getting projected at you all the time. And the key for you is to allow yourself to feel your grief and fear about those things. And if you did that, you'll release those beliefs. And once those beliefs leave you, It'll be like creating a wall, a spiritual wall, against the attack. And after that time, nobody will attack. Does that make sense? So when I first, uh, when I first t started telling people that I was Jesus, it was nearly 10 years ago, right? In the first year, I used to get uh, phone calls from people who said they were going to murder me. And I used to get a lot of them. Like, there was one, a couple of people in particular who, who, who were who concerned me enough to 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 think about calling the police you know because of how strong their level of rage was and and to be honest with you if i didn't deal with some emotions i'm pretty sure they would have killed me during that time that's how that they were willing to and they told me they were going to and they had the plans all set in place but what happened was i dealt with some emotions about being attacked and after one year, I didn't receive a single call from them anymore. Not a single one. But instead, I started receiving a lot of emails about getting attacked. And once I dealt with some more emotions about it, all of those emails stopped. There was one time when I received about 180 emails in the space of a week of people who were going to murder me. Right? right? And I dealt with a lot of emotion about all of that. And then all of those emails stopped and it doesn't seem... We had a lot of media attention after that and, and I didn't get any emails at all from anybody who said they were going to murder me. There were people who just called me an idiot then. So then I had to feel about that. <laughs> Does that make sense? So I had to work my way through specific emotions. Every time you work your way through a specific emotion, what happens is it's like a barrier and it's a natural barrier of love that actually gets established. It's not based on fear or terror or control or any of those things. It's just a barrier that gets established where you no longer, for example, if you dealt with your terror, you would no longer feel worried about terror. You would no longer feel terror inside of you. You would no longer feel terrified about any event. And probably fear would also go when, once that occurs. And now you'd have a barrier. And as a result of this barrier, you would no longer attract events that would make you feel terrified. Whether those events occurred in the sleep state or the awake state, doesn't matter. You just no longer attract them. So, so a lot of the times now, like people think, boy, you know, you must get a lot of attack. And no, I don't. I don't get a lot of attack now. But that's 10 years after dealing with like, the first five years, I just got attacked all the time, like all the time. And I had to work through lots of emotions before this barrier naturally established itself. And, uh, and as a result, hardly get any now. Still get occasional ones for different reasons, but but not like hundreds of them anymore and not, I don't, you know, get people on the phone yelling and screaming at me and telling me they're going to cut and slip my throat and rape Mary and all those kind of things anymore, right? So, you know, 
the attack has reduced because you deal with some of the emotions. So the secret to this is deal with the emotions you feel and actually feel them, allow yourself to feel them, but realize they're not, you're not to blame for them. And this is what's shutting you down, is that there's a feeling in you that you are to blame for them that shuts you from down, from feeling them. And, it, and when you blame yourself for things that happened in your childhood, you are really falling into the trap of reinforcing your parents' beliefs all over again with yourself. You're, you're basically telling yourself what they told you, thinking that it will protect you. Now that worked when you were little, right? And the only reason why it worked was because you became in agreement with your parent and therefore parents who feel the agreement generally feel that that means that the child doesn't need to be corrected in some way. That makes sense? But, but as an adult, you are allowed to have a different opinion. You're a, and the only way you're going to maintain a different opinion is by working your way through the emotions that have been created. And the only reason, reason why you'll do that is when you stop believing that they are all your fault. That's the only way you'll stop doing that. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yeah. If we come across to here. Um, uh, where's the other mic? Yep, yep. sorry. Down, just down there. Thanks. Hi. Um, you've spoken a lot about the feminine and masculine injuries as they show up in our body. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of injuries on the left side of my body. Mm -hmm. And uh, so much so that I'm com severely contracted on the left side. And I know that that's about feminine, the, how I see myself as a woman primarily, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is influenced not only, like that doesn't necessarily mean it's a relationship issues with my mother. It could also be how my father viewed me and my mother as women. Certainly, there's a combination of factors, isn't there? If we look at our two parents, so we've got our father, he has beliefs about women and he has beliefs about men in comparison to women. And if you look at your mother, she has beliefs about women and beliefs about men in comparison to women. Your father has beliefs about men and therefore about himself and beliefs of women in comparison to men and your mother has the same cycle. So, so basically there's these four groups of emotions that are getting projected at the child regarding gen their gender. So here's the child. So they're receiving these groups of belief systems coming from both parents, not just from one. And by the way, this applies even when one of the parents was not living with you. Mm. Right? There's still a projection emotionally from the person who was involved in your creation. When I say creation, the creation of your two bodies, not you. <laughs> and, and so these two people have a large bearing on what you're going to grow up believing about yourself. Now, in addition to that, you're going to have, a, as a result of those injuries, you're going to have a projection at men about what you expect and a projection of, towards women about what you expect from them. So, in other words, you will develop expectations and demands upon both genders. Now, most of our physical issues revolve around expectations and demands that we're making upon others, actually. And uh, in other words, they revolve around unloving behaviour that we automatically engage without thinking. And we do it without thinking because we've been predisposed to it by growing up in a certain environment. So the question I would start asking myself is, OK, what are my expectations of women? So what are your expectations of women? Hold the microphone up. <laughs> um, I'm kind of scared of them. You're frightened of them? Yeah. What I, was your mum like? Well, she's um, not, uh, not very free and 
she she seems quite bound by expectations and um, so why are you not, afraid of them um, because I, I've had um, I've, I've tried to please them I've been um, so why did you try to please your mother I just seem to be programmed to do that. I do, well, I think I had that feeling of shame or um, blame that I wasn't good enough. So I tried to be... What was your name again? Catherine. Catherine, that's right. Catherine, there's a lot you're not saying about your mother. Yes. You're not being honest about her. Okay. Um, you, you, you don't even want to say yeah. what her personality and nature was in terms of her treatment of you. Yes. Because I'm afraid of her. Yeah. And you don't even want to say how she treated you. You don't even want to be honest about it. Yeah. Now, if a person doesn't want to be honest, remember? Yeah. Okay. You're never going to face the truth. You, if you don't want to be honest about what actually happened yeah. with your mum, then you're never going to face the truth about it. So what you're doing instead is you're shutting down the left-hand side of your body. Right? In a, okay, in an well, effort. I'll be honest then. I mean, I know, I mean, I obviously should, should know that I want to be, but I am scared. That's why I'm not, but... Um, no, I, so, no, just stop. That's okay. not a good enough reason. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and every time you say, but I'm scared, that's why I'm not. Yeah, I know. You are basically saying that that is a good enough reason. No. Yeah. You know, you're basically giving yourself a way out of dealing with the emotions. Right. And I've done that. I've lived in fear. Um, but there is a justification of fear going on. Yeah. You basically saying, but I'm afraid. I should be able to get away with it. Yeah. And I but I'm afraid. How that. can you expect me to deal with that? Yeah. But I'm afraid. And I'm saying to you, but you're afraid is not good a good excuse. Yeah. In fact, it's a very self-defeating excuse. Yes. Every time you say, I'm not going to do it because I'm afraid, you are defeating yourself. No one else is involved in your defeat. You're doing it to yourself. Right? The key is to face the truth about what you're afraid of. Feel what you're afraid of. So I haven't been treated well by my mother or my grandmother or my older sister or my female bosses, my female colleagues. This is a, these it are just, law of attraction events yeah. showing you that there, are, there is a large amount of fear inside of you about women. Yes. I agree. Yes. So your first step is to be honest about it. Yeah. You follow? That's number one. You need to be honest. Because you've got to know the truth before you can face it. Before you feel anything about it, you have to know it. So you've got to be honest about what's actually happened. So yeah. what's happened with your mum? What's happened with your sister? I would get out of thing and note everything down. Of all the things that you feel where you weren't treated lovingly or fairly by these people. Same goes with your female bosses. Same goes with every female in your life. How have they treated you? How, what, what's been your, you know. And there's a feeling inside of you too that oh, men are easier to get along with as well as a result. And that is also a flaw because yeah. men aren't easier to get along with at all, <laughs> right? There's just a belief in you that they are as a result of what's happened through these events. Does that make sense? And so you now have a whole heap of expectations about women as well. So you expect women to treat you better than they do. Mm -hmm. you're, right? So you're a bit angry with how women treat you generally and you, you withdraw from their company generally. And in fact, you're more sensitive to them being honest and truthful even with you than you would be with a man. So if Mary was up here telling you some truth, you'd be a lot more resistive to hearing it than you are from me, just because of these predispositions of feelings that you have about women. Does that make sense? Now, you need to understand that if, your physical, if something's physically happening to your body, then it means this problem is long-standing and well-entrenched. You see, by the time it affects your body, there's already a lot going on, a lot of denial going on by the time it gets to affect your physical body. So the fact that something's affecting your physical body about it is an indication that this is a long-standing and entrenched belief system that you believe you do not wish to, to fix. Right? And the main excuse you give for yourself not fixing it is, I'm afraid, I'm afraid fear. And there's one other main excuse you have too. 
Do you know what that is? Can it's my fault. Well, that's uh, certainly one of your belief systems, but there's an excuse that excuses you from feeling even that. So what if I give you some homework and you find the other one? Sure. You find the other belief. So fear is one of your beliefs. You understand what I mean by a belief? You believe that because you are afraid of women, you shouldn't have to deal with these issues. Yeah. So what's another belief you have with regard to women that causes you to not have to deal with these issues is the question I'm asking. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So if you have a think about what that might be, you have a number of them, but there's two primary ones. One of them is your fear. Far away. Um, and also, I'm wondering about spirit influence here because I've been afraid all my life since... Yeah. I can't even I can't remember a time when I wasn't afraid, yep. and yet I don't believe I've ever been sexually or physically abused. But I think that I was very sensitive to spirits and very afraid. Well, every by child them. is sensitive yeah. to spirits. Uh, but if you think about what I just said to you, yes, how does that not apply to spirits? Yeah, it's exactly the same. What I just drew on the board was your wishing to close down on the female side. You're afraid of all the women. Now, what do you think your fear of women is going to attract? Women angry. Women who are like that. Women to be afraid of, right? Yeah. Scary women, right? That's what they're going to attract. And that's going to attract them whether they're living here on earth or in the spirit world. Makes no difference where they live. The only difference is you don't see them. So if, if you, you can assume that if you've had a long list of women treating you badly on earth then that would make sense, wouldn't it? That you must also, given the fact that you've got no protection towards this happening, a lots of women in the spirit world who also treat you badly. Surely that must be the case. So assume it's the case. Whatever is happening here on earth, if it's happening, and you have a level of control over it, and yet it's still happening, has definitely got to be happening in the spirit world where you've got no level of control over it. Doesn't it? Can you see that? It's got to be happening. So let's say, let's say the average guy here has one, one negative experience with a male every year. And the rest of the time he spends most of his time with women. Right? If he's got to assume that if he's got one negative thing going on with a male a year, that there's got to be more than that happening in the spirit world, where he's got no level of control or protection over it. Any event that's happening here on Earth in a f fairly regular or semi-regular basis has to be occurring in the spirit world where you have less protection against it occurring. So, so what I find quite remarkable for most people is that they ask me the question about what's happening on Earth and then they say, well, what's happening in the spirit world then? And I feel like whatever is happening on Earth multiplied by three or four. That's what's happening there. <laughs> Does that make sense? Generally, that's what's going on there. Yeah, Mary? Uh, when you say protection in that context, you mean control, don't you? You mean us actually controlling our lives to prevent things rather than... Because no. God's, God's laws, if we're in harmony with God's laws, they're protecting us whether we're here or there. Hey? Correct, correct. So if this is us and we are in harmony with all of God's laws of love, so we're in a perfect state of love, let's say we're at one with God, there's this sort of protective barrier around us, created by our soul. So it is a protective barrier that's created by soul, but you could almost consider it as it's a love barrier, which means that only loving things can enter our soul. Does that make sense? So it's not really like an armour, it's just like a barrier of love, which basically says to the rest of the universe, only a loving event can happen to me. And only loving events do. But when we've got feelings that are out of harmony with love and anger, shame and other, event, other feelings, they create holes in this barrier of love, if you like. So now there's gaps in our barrier of love where when somebody projects certain things at us, it can enter one of these places that is open. All right? And all of that emotion can enter you then and damage you in some way both spiritually but also energetically and physically can damage you. 
So this is how spirits finish up getting attached to people as well. They, so this one here that I've drawn here is about the persons that say it's related to their second chakra area, which is about their self-worth. Now I have spirits, male or female, depending on the type of problem, who, are, who energetically project and attach to the person through that area so that they can make that person feel worse about themselves. And why would they do that? What do you get out of making someone else feel bad about themselves? You get to feel better about yourself. Yeah, that's right. So they get to feel, I'm better than I really am by projecting all this crap out of somebody who accepts this other false belief that they're worse. Does that make sense? Now once they close up that hole by feeling some emotion, that hole gets closed up. So now this hole's closed, right? What can happen now? There's a love barrier there. Right? These people have to be the same amount of love as that barrier in order to go through it. Do you follow me? So they have to be, they'd be loving people and what would they be telling that part of you? They'd be telling you, you're a nice person, you're a good person, you're worthy. You know, and even though you've got problems, you know, God still loves you. And God still, that's the kind of messages you'd be then getting. Can you see? But if that love barrier is not there, then any spirit who has any belief system about you can just project that you and you'll accept it. And it doesn't matter whether these people are on earth or in the spirit world. They'll do it. You know, you walk up to the shopping ca counter and, you know, order some gear and, and they'll feel, yeah, I can dump on this girl. <laughs> you know, I can dump on this lady. So they do. Somebody else walks up and they treat them really nice. Right? Because they, are, they don't have the ethics to treat all people well. They only treat people well who feed their addictions. Right? And they treat badly other people to meet their addictions. And once we're in a state of love, once we're in a state of love here, a person can have lots and lots of holes in their love barrier, if we can call it that, and we will not choose to damage them through those holes. If we were in a state of love, we would never choose to damage that lady, even though we know she feels bad about herself. Does that make sense? So we'd never choose to harm her. But people who are not in a state of love will choose to harm you if they can get away with it. They will. And the only way to address that is by clearing up the emotion that creates that hole. So that's an emotion that creates the hole. It's not an intellectual thought, it's an emotion. Once you clear up the emotion that creates the hole, nothing can enter that, enter that location anymore except if it's higher than that in a condition of love. Then it can enter. So you get to the point once you've cleared up that hole, that you only want to spend time and, and you naturally attract people who always think you're a nice person. Isn't that wonderful? Instead of naturally attracting people who are always dumping on you <laughs> or feeling you're a bad person. Just by clearing up that one hole. And it doesn't matter whether you're in the spirit world, in the sleep state or here on earth, you will attract the same kind of person. So it's immaterial where they are. You'll attract the same kind of person. Does that make sense? So if you understand that, then you can see the importance of knowing the truth, facing truth, and then the third thing, which is really, really important and probably one of the most important parts of the process, and that is to feel the truth. Right? Many of us willingly do the first two, but when we get to the third, we're all resistive. Uh, we don't want to feel it. So, you know, we go, oh yeah, my mum, when, when I was five, you know, I just went up to her and said something, she just belted me across the face because she was just angry. And, and we talk about that with someone else, and it wasn't that terrible. Yeah, that was terrible, you know, that's what parents normally do though. So we're now knowing the truth, but not yet facing it. Then we go, when we start to face it, we go, wow, that was really quite bad actually, it was really off. And she did it for her own selfishness, like there was nothing, I didn't do anything wrong. 
and we start facing that, yeah, that was the truth, that, that she did the thing wrong, not us. But what comes next? Feeling about it. Now, most of the time, we don't want to feel about it. We'll talk about it. And do you, do you know what I've found? The more you're talking about something, the less you want to feel about it. So if you find yourself talking over and over to different people about the same subject, that's the subject that you don't want to feel about the most, generally. Right? It's when you stop talking about it, you, and in fact the reality is you will stop talking about it when you start feeling about it, probably. Because once you start feeling about it, talking about it feels cheap. Make sense? When you start feeling about it, the feelings are so powerful that you can't describe them anymore. So talking about it feels cheap then. Yep. Now what I find with regard to abuse, abusive situations, is a lot of people who have been abused know they've been abused. A lot of them have faced the truth that they were abused. In other words, they have faced the, fear, the, the abusive uh, treatment. They know that it happened. And oftentimes they have tried to prevent those people from abusing them anymore by withdrawing from their life and so forth, so they're facing the truth about it. But they still haven't yet felt the truth. They haven't felt how angry they are about it. They haven't felt how sad they are about it. They haven't felt how ashamed they felt about it, how afraid they were. They haven't felt those feelings. And because that is a requirement to patch up the whole, the whole doesn't get patched up. And when the hole doesn't get patched up, the, there's a graping hole in that location and that then allows more people to do what was done to you. And this is where we need to be willing to feel. Remember the definition of humility. Be willing to feel every single thing. Be willing to see yourself as God sees you. And if you can feel every single thing, then you start feeling the truth of what happened. When you feel the truth of what happened, you release the emotion that you've been carrying around. And when you release the emotion being carrying around, the whole gets all patched up. And now any person who wants to harm you in that place can no longer harm you. And it doesn't matter whether they're a spirit or a person on earth, they can't harm you anymore in that location that you've patched up. 